For decades, small butcher shops and meat lockers were a staple of American life. These mom and pop establishments began disappearing, however, as more families began to buy their meat at one-stop grocery stores. We've seen a fair amount of them disappear. Uh, they're older facilities, and when the current owners retire or move on through lack of interest in doing the work, and are the building being old and maybe not up to date with its, you know, its, its equipment and standards that the government like to see in a building, they close down. But that downward trend may be slowing or even reversing. In May, Midwest grocery chain Fairway Stores opened a brand new, old concept meat shop in Omaha. The store, considerably smaller than its typical groceries, aims to capitalize on both the company's reputation for quality meat and nostalgia for old butcher shops. I hope that the customer comes in this Fairway Meat Market and has an experience of, once again, the old style meat markets from back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, the way old fairways were from the standpoint of uh, when they would see their butcher at the meat block, et cetera. But uh, we've taken that, we've kept that feeling, and we've modernized it. The Omaha Fairway Meat Market, the company's first, has a counter that is 16 feet longer than those in its typical store. It also features fresh seafood and grass-fed beef. And while larger metro areas such as New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles have new shops where the meat cutters like to call themselves artisanal butchers, there are others scattered throughout the nation where that kind of work never went out of style, even if those butchers don't apply the same trending lingo to what they do. I'm not, hey Mike, you can edit all this, right? Yeah. yeah. What's the artisan butcher? You ever heard anyone use that term? Not there, I like to Google that. <laughs> Although Chris Kramer, not related to Fairway's CEO, would never consider labeling himself this way, he is as much an artisan, a marketing term that hints at a craftsman cutting by hand, as a butcher gets. Kramer is a fourth generation butcher who has run his own shop in Elmwood, Nebraska since 1981. His great grandfather was a butcher in Denmark. His grandfather, who owned a horse slaughter plant in Papillion, Nebraska, told stories of how some ate horse meat, normally used in dog food, during the lean years of World War II. Kramer's late father ran several butcher shops in his lifetime, both in Kansas and in Nebraska. In the late 1920s, the first meat lockers were opened in the U.S., and farmers or others rented frozen food storage to preserve the meat they had butchered. From, from the early days, settlers, so to speak, they did their butchering, obviously, on the farm. Uh, they had cellars. They would uh, cut ice from ponds and take it into their cellar, cover it with hay, and they would have, if I recall, they could have cold meat until July if, under the right conditions, and they had enough ice. And then if it moves on from there, it got to where, you know, electricity and you, and you had your small locker plant like this start up. By 1940, almost half of U.S. homes had a refrigerator. Eventually, demand for the lockers fell off. Many of the surviving shops diversified by adding butchering services. According to census data, a large decline occurred between 1992 and 2012 when 45% of the remaining U.S. meat shops closed their doors. More than 300 miles to the northeast, in southern Minnesota, is another meat locker that survived the decades when so many others closed. The 81-year-old Conger Meat Market was opened in 1935 by a Czechoslovakian immigrant and butcher named Ray Butch Bohanik. An area farmer had convinced Bohanek to leave the Lake Mills, Iowa butcher shop where he was working to open his own in Conger, Minnesota. Milford Bohanek, who ran the operation with his wife Beverly from 1959 to 2000, says his father built the shop on skids, thinking he could have the building dragged to a new location if Conger let him down. There wasn't a basement put in there until, well, I don't know, the number of years afterwards, and they lifted the building up and and put a basement underneath it, yeah. The Bohanic family ran Conger Meat Market for 70 years before selling it 11 years ago to current owners, Jeremy and Darcy Johnson. 
what we originally talked about was to leave everything the same. We didn't want to change anything. We didn't want to change the recipes, the tried and true traditions of the Conger meat market. They worked for 80 years, so that's not something we we're going to change. The couple has tried to keep the big things, like Butch Bahonik's traditional recipes from Czechoslovakia, and little things, like handing out samples from the meat smoker to kids, while making plans for future expansion. We thought it's a great opportunity um, to buy an established business and to be self-employed. Currently, the meat sold in their small retail shop comes from larger federally inspected meat packing plants that are scattered throughout the nation. They, like many smaller state inspected meat lockers, are limited to connecting livestock producers with buyers looking for custom cut quarters or halves of beef, pork, or venison. They are also restricted to in-state sales. Our job, in a sense, is easy because we are surrounded by so many successful farmers and the quality of the meat that's coming in is just second to none. And I think uh, people, the customers, are happy when they come through our door because they know they're going to fill their freezer with um, locally raised, good quality beef or pork. Next year, Darcy and Jeremy Johnson hope to open a small, federally inspected meat packing plant in an old creamery next door. Because they will be federally inspected, they will be able to sell locally raised meat in smaller amounts directly to the customers. The designation further allows for sales across state lines. So far, the creamery they are renovating for the Conger meat market expansion does not appear to feature any skids. I think uh, the Conger meat market will be here for another 80 years. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.